Welcome to the state of Ohio. I'm Karen Kassler. There's a housing crisis in Ohio and across the country created by a shortfall of affordable housing combined with high mortgage rates and rising rents. There's a shortage of about 270,000 affordable and available rental units, meaning there are only 40 affordable units for every 100 Ohio households. According to a report last year from the Coalition on Homelessness and Housing in Ohio and the National Low Income Housing Coalition. State lawmakers and Governor Mike DeWine have said they want to do something about that. The two-year budget includes a $100 million low-income housing tax credit for developers, estimated to create 4,000 affordable rental units, and a $50 million single-family housing tax credit program that seeks to help first-time buyers. This week, faith leaders and realtors were in town for legislative lunches as state lawmakers unveiled several bills addressing a lack of affordable housing and more. And my State House News Bureau colleague Sarah Donaldson has been following this. Tell us more. Yes, so State Senator Michelle Reynolds describes it as a tale of two Ohio's. Although an affordable housing crunch exists statewide, Reynolds says the demand issues in growing urban cores like Columbus differ greatly from those in shrinking rural communities like Marietta. Everybody deserves to have a place to call their own. Kelly Burkhardt has been volunteering with transitional housing organizations in rural Northwest Ohio for nearly two decades. To Burkhardt, also an evangelical Lutheran, housing offers someone help. It offers them dignity. The clients she works with aren't always as visible, she says. They may not be on the streets, but surfing couches. She says she believes more and more Ohioans can afford less and less. As home rental and buying costs soar simultaneously, she's watched the need for assistance swell, too. Truly, I just know that over the past few years, and especially since COVID, um, the lists are getting longer. Michael Jones is a longtime realtor in Columbus. Jones says he sees the market as strong and robust, but not for everybody. We have to figure out how do we help the first time home buyers, people with limited means and resources become homeowners. We know for a fact that home ownership is the single path towards financial wealth and independence. And we want to help more people be able to do that. It's caught the attention of some state lawmakers who this week brought forward a slate of proposals to address a laundry list of housing issues. People, I think, intuitively understand the need for more housing, but they also have a lot of issues like, well, I don't necessarily want, you know, a lot of this new housing in my backyard. So that, you know, it's become more of a state issue because of that. Senator Bill Blessing, a Republican, says it largely starts in 2007 with the Great Recession. For one, since then, home builders haven't been building nearly enough units, let alone diverse ones, to meet demand. Led by Reynolds, also a Republican, Blessing and a cohort of other senators on a bipartisan select housing committee zigzagged the state over the last six months, putting together a cohesive profile on Ohio's housing environment with nearly two dozen action items. Now they're rolling out the legislation. Reynolds and Democratic Senator Herschel Craig introduced four bills Tuesday, totaling more than 1,300 pages. They deal with everything from tackling anti-build zoning to expanding the Department of Development to the Department of Housing and Development. Republican Senate President Matt Huffman says changes like this should have come long ago, but it's an election year, historically leaving lawmakers less in office time between now and the end of the legislative session in December. I don't think that's enough time to have the hearings uh, do something comprehensive or even not comprehensive. That he says it's the start of something with months out and years out uh, goals. A day before the Senate's announcements, Republican Representative Adam Matthews and Democratic Representative Donnie Isaacson proposed awarding local government's grants for passing and implementing at least three pro-housing policies. The state would set the standards, funding it by eliminating a non-business tax credit for property owners not living in the property. If it's a property you don't live in, then it's probably not a non-business and shouldn't utilize a tax incentive that was meant to boost homeownership. Blessing tried to make that tax credit stricter during last year's budget cycle, but was blocked. Sarah Donaldson, State House News Bureau.